Hello folks and welcome back to the 2022 Australian Disc Golf Championship. This is the final day of MPO coverage. As always, we want to thank all of our sponsors and Gatekeeper as well for this coverage here. I'm excited to bring you this final round. And with me again is Patty Robinson. Patty, how are you doing today? Very well, Nick. Keen to uh, watch this final round and the conclusion out here at Tunnel Ridge Ranch. Pretty cool. Yeah, this has been a very special property, I would say, for us to play on. I was glad I was able to attend. And here's a look at our card today. True Gibson, Chris Hill, Luke Bain, and Blake Houston. And looking at our leaderboard here, got a couple familiar names there. Got myself and Patty there. Yeah, and nice little jump up. Today. Yeah, what are you thinking uh, we're looking for here today? Uh, yeah, well, I was sitting in night, so I wanted to try and cash. So that's all I was trying to do. But um, yeah, I'm sure there's a few boys hoping to make some moves. Yeah, and one of those would be Drew Gibson here, sponsored by Infinite Disc. He's currently leading the event. And I would assume he's going to continue his hot streak of playing double-digit rounds. Yeah, then next up is uh, Chris Hill, who is a... Uh, um, Sponsored by Casterplast, as you can see there. I know he's going to be trying to work that Rico putter. He's got some nice drivers there too. Up next, we have Luke Bain, sponsored by Innova. Um, putting with the AVR there. The Mako, the T-Bird, and the Thunderbird are going to be some more curses out there for him today. And running out the card is Blake Houston. Young gun, 16 year old from Perth. He's got a mixed bag here, no current uh, disc manufacturer sponsor. But uh, I know that he likes his zones, putts with the PA1. Yeah, keen to watch him play. All right, hole one, par three, 70 meter. Nice little downhill. Bit of a must get birdie for this card, I reckon. It's a good way to start your round. Ladies and gentlemen, for our 220 lead card. Leading off with a score of 99 from the Santan Valley, this year's winner of the Las Vegas Challenge and representative of Infinite Disc, we've got Drew Gibson. Nice introduction there by tournament, co-tournament director Pat Ferris. Yeah, I met Pat for the first time being down there, and what a great guy. Drew up here first, going with the backhand that we've seen all week. Ooh, that needs to slow down. So there is wow. that little pond there that is OB. It looks like he's just Castle missed that. And from Newcastle Disc Golf, the always fun to watch, Chris Hill. That was a good example of the elevation change there. If you do have a disc coming in too hot by the basket, you can get quite a ways past it. Yeah, Chris Hill or more commonly known as Chili, down here. This is looking pretty good. Great oh, shot from him on the, the first tee here. With a combined score of 105, representing Team Innova, the local legend, Luke Bain. Yeah, Luke Bain would be considered the local boy, being Queenslander, so he's got quite a lot of support. Yeah, that was a good intro. I like that. Going with this sidearm approach there. Yeah, this is the route that I prefer to go on this. Looks like he's gone a little bit long. And wrapping up our lead card for this year's Australian Championship with a combined score of 106, representing Ausdisc, RPM, and Team Heiser Flight, we have Blake Houston! And you were saying Blake was how old? 16, mate. Oh, man. Yep. A couple more years and he's going to be a shredder. <laughs> yeah. He's already playing well, but can't wait to see him in a couple more years here. Yeah, he's won a few tournaments this year. And uh, I think he'll take it a little bit easy next year because he's uh, in his final year of school. But uh, I've heard plans to... Um, to do some traveling after that, and I think he's going to make his way over to America, so that'll be really cool. Drew here just kind of laying up to make sure he gets his three on this first hole. It's pretty out of position on the down slope of that hill. Bit of an awkward putt here for Luke. Let's see if he can give us a run. 
Yeah, that was hmm. pretty unfortunate there. He looked to be about Circle's edge. Blake here for his birdie. Lovely. That's a good way to start. Yeah, when you're trying to get your first birdie, or would you rather have a park job, or do you like to make a tester to get it out of the way? <laughs> uh, I'll take the park job any day, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. I think a lot of us would. The other guy's just... Oh, and Chris just tapping in. Wow, what a drive by him. I didn't realize it was that close. Yeah. Watch for that cheeky grin. You'll get a lot of that with Chris. <laughs> Next up, hole two. I really like this hole. 100 meters, par three. You've got this nice sloping elevation down to the left, but a tight gap to hit. And if you can make that, then you should be right on the dance floor looking at a birdie. Chris up here first. I think most of our players will be throwing either a light fairway or a mid-range here. And he looks like he's going to get it right up to circle's edge there. Yeah, that's a great drive. Maybe just trying to put a little bit of pressure on Drew early in this round. Be pretty daunting trying to make up three strokes on Drew Gibson in the final round, but see how he goes. Hey, you know, he's got a chance. You can get in trouble out here. You can get a lot of birdies out here. So I think we got some exciting golf left and... Oh, boy, Ooh. unfortunately for Drew, he's going to kick way left. If you are going to take a kick on this hole, going left is better because it there's a lot of trouble to get into on the right-hand side. Luke's somehow navigating through most of it, and then looks like I will open approach from there. So for the MPO boys, this hole played at 2. 8-1 on this round with eight wow. birdies on the day. What That's an incredible upshot. upshot there. That's one way to get yourself back into position. Blake looks like he's maybe just outside circle two or the edge. Yeah, that looked, yeah. That looked almost kind of just like a layup instead of a run. Hmm. Not sure if he was trying to run that one or not. Oh, Chili, back to back. That's a great putt. He's getting, he's getting started early. Yeah, he's getting the run in. I love it. He's getting excited. It's good, eh? It's one way to try and trace, chase down Drew Gibson here. <laughs> Luke just sneaking one over the tray there. Good pass save. Drew tapping in. Yeah, when I was playing, I thought on these first four holes, I wanted to at least get two of them was my goal, so. Yeah, same here. Um, yeah, hole three. This is this is a really good one to get as well. It seems quite uh, straightforward for the MPO boys, but there is some trouble. 72 meters. You don't want to kick off to the left because it goes downhill very quickly. I'd expect to see most people throwing this sidearm line. <laughs> Ooh. What an unfortunate roll there. It landed great inside the circle, and he's probably going to be close to circle's edge, if not outside. Yeah, if he had a rolled maybe another two meters down that hill, that drops off very quickly. So a little bit fortunate there. Blake getting his significantly higher on the hill there. No private circle's edge putt. Oh, Drew. Just... That seems like the tree that kind of sucks in all the sidearm discs. Oh. Oh, that's There's another one. Both Luke and Drew. He's going to be in a tough spot down here. As you can see, all the trees he's got to navigate through. Got Drew from about a hundred. Oh, 
Yeah, it should be easy up and down for him. Yeah, Luke's still got a bit to work with here. Looks like he's outside circle one. Oh, oh that's a great pass. Oh, wonderful par save there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, that definitely a replay here. Definitely. Just dead center, hard of it. Mm. Slowing down right at the perfect time, also. Chris here. Oh, just... Fortunate to leave that low and get the cage. Yeah, Blake just missing that birdie putt too. Maybe a little bit too yep. nose down. Yeah, that or I was going to say, maybe a little nerves here. Final day, first couple holes. Got a gallery forming. Drew's going to tap in there. Is probably from about 20 feet to get as far. Yeah, it's in interesting what you said before about trying to get at least two birdies on these first four holes, but I kind of also felt the first four holes were a, a little bit of a uh, warm-up as well. <laughs> PDG Defense Support Helpline. Hey, I was wondering if I could add some rules to my tournament to make it a little unique. Sure. You just need a waiver from the Director of Event Support. Okay, great. An island green? Shouldn't be a problem. And elevated baskets? Yeah, we get those all the time. Oh, and <clears throat> forehands only? <sighs> Sarah? We've been over this. Sorry. I mean, but I don't see why we can't try it. I mean, everyone loves forehands. Like, you can go right, you can go left, you can throw straight, you can throw high, you can throw low. And a big thanks to the Rad Creations crew, the sponsors for the event um, with the Flying Disc Store. They've designed and made all the baskets that you can see here, the Rad Ace Basket. Done an absolutely awesome job for growing disc golf in Australia. And Chris with a laser down the hill. He's going to be a little deep there. Yeah, he might have a bit of an awkward putt with that tree. It was just in a perfect spot behind the basket I think this is the route we're going to see more of here is that outside hyzer line and oh look at that that's exactly why look at that touching the pole I think even yeah can't miss that putt Blake good on you mate right in my confidence zone <laughs> oh true it's a good skip there as well it's going to get him inside the circle Yeah, we're seeing the forehand line here from Luke. Oh, a nice little action off the ground there. He should be about six or seven metres. Well, I'll be close than that. Yeah. All of our players with a good birdie chance here. You were saying Rad helps with uh, disc golf course design and installation, is that correct? Correct, yeah. Um, Andrew Ferguson's been working with them for four or five years now, and yeah, he... Uh, Goes around all around Australia, designing, installing courses. Um, I reckon he's probably installed about 60, 70% of the courses in Australia at the moment. So, yeah, done an absolutely awesome job. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. We need uh, organizations and people like that to help move the sport along. As our card is going to get their first star frame of the day here on hole number four. Yeah. Get in there, boys. Shake those chains. Yeah. Is this an Australian tradition? Uh, no, we've actually, um, uh, I think it was the Europeans, we saw them, like, I think the Finnish boys were doing it, but I reckon it's great, why not? Go and shake those yeah, chains when not? you get that star frame. I love it. Hole five here. 
Yeah, Chris 98 first. meters, pretty straight shot. These boys want to get this. Lovely Chris seems Chris. to be pretty dialed here today. Yeah, he's he's made up a bit of a uh, couple of strokes on Drew, sitting one back from him. Very smooth looking drive from Blake there. Were you throwing a mid range here or a fairway, Nick? I was throwing the mid range here. Yeah. Just trying to throw it nice and flat. Drew's throwing the hyzer route along that tree line and it'll wind up in the circle as well. Looks like one of his go to buzzers. Yeah, we've seen that quite a bit over the weekend. Luke looks like he's gone a little bit early. This is probably looking at definitely outside circle part, maybe close to circle two edge. But yeah, he can one of these that. before. Let's see what he does. Oh, Ooh, I thought he Lord. had that one. Jeez. Dang. Great looking Those are line. the ones that if you can get one or two of those around, you're sitting pretty good. Uh, a little bit disappointing from Blake there, I'm sure. He, uh, yeah. I know he's he's working on the putting quite a lot. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Snuck in there. Uh, Basket a little hug there, Chili. Fair enough. Yeah, you got to give us some love on catching that one. <laughs> Drew here for his birdie. Ooh, a little high, but sticks. I got to admit, thinking back to this round, this round was probably the hottest day. Very, very, very humid. I know that I, I had sweat dripping off, like running down my arm, dripping off my fingers between the holes. Um, the powder bag came in. Definitely good, uh, good usefulness here. I wonder if yeah, uh, I agree with that. Maybe the guys are just sort of getting used to their conditions a bit here. Uh, next up, hole six, par three, 128 meters, 420 feet. Got that little pond behind the basket there that is out of bounds that you don't want to go into. And uh, there's not a whole lot of wind, but if there is any, it's sort of coming in a bit of a headwind here, which can hold that forehand over a bit, but... Chris looks like he's done this pretty well. Yeah, hitting that side slope there, kicked him down a little bit, but still probably about circle's edge. Again with that uh, forehand style. That Oh, jeez. Oh. That would have been... Almost hard. ringing it up far out. Yeah, I was going to say, that would have been a great ace to watch. Drew seems to be... Uh, Finding his groove here, these last couple holes. Well, that's gone a bit far to the right. Well, there is a little bit of wind there, you can see in the trees. It's just sort of caught that disc and sailed it a little bit for Blake. Luke here going with a much wider sidearm. This looks like a good line. And that in it is. Circle. He'll be in a good spot. I want to remind our folks at home that the front nine will be here on Gatekeeper Media's page, and you'll be able to find the back nine on the PDGA's YouTube page. So make sure you go on over there for the back nine here. Drew for birdie. Mm, great putt. Cheesy must have been close to that ace. Yeah, just hyzered right back just a little too late. Oh, good putt from Luke. I didn't actually manage to birdie this hole over the weekend. Did you, Nick? I did. I got it uh, twice over the weekend. Um the uh, sidearm for me, it's right about that distance that I can get it just inside the circle with a skip, I would say. 
Well, you are a better man than me. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Chris, unfortunately, going to be three putting here. I think he might have been a bit lucky to not be OB on that um, first putt as yeah, well. Yeah, it looked pretty close to that water there. Good little par stroke for Blake there. Chris just tap it in. When the shots fire, my soul at ease, yeah. If I go down, I might cause a sea, yeah. Them scheme, them go to sleep, yeah. They don't want to go roll with me, yeah. Rub with you, rub, rub with you, rub. Rub with you, rub, rub with you, rub. Okay, hole seven, par three, 113 meters, 370 feet. You've got this little gap that you can see the drone just fly through and then it turns hard, almost 90 degrees to the left. There is a small little window on the left hand side or over the scrub that you might see a few guys try and throw through. Yeah, Drew's actually been really good at getting this hole or getting out to the backside, but he has a hard time getting far enough left. He's usually plenty deep, and as you can see there, just yeah, catching some of that cabbage and dropping down. It's definitely a risk reward shot. This one, if you can, if you go straight, you you're not going to be anywhere near circle one, like Drew's sort of drive, but if you can get something to fade to the left, then that's how you end up on the uh, oh. green here. Jeez, very close. I feel like if you can beat that tree that he hit with something stable, you're going to find your way inside the circle. And as you can see, if you drop down early here, it is, it's not easy to get up and down for your par. Oh my goodness, Luke, though, making it look easy. Yeah, great little upshot. Yeah, what was that, a little tomahawk? Yeah. Maybe just a turnover sidearm? It's hard to tell there. Drew with a long look here, bit downhill. Uh, it looked like he was just playing that quite smart. Yeah, I wasn't messing with that one. He's just going to lay it up and... Looks like Chris is going to do the same there. Yeah. Blake in there. Yeah, unfortunately on that last hole, losing two strokes back to a three-stroke deficit. Yeah, there was only one birdie during the round from Austin to sell it Alessandro. He was on my card... And I reckon he would have been close to an ace. He hit that tiny little gap on the left-hand side and was absolutely parked. Fantastic. Love to see those. All right. Hole eight, par four, 184 meters, 600 feet. Good sort of two-shot par four here. Placement shot and then playing out to the peninsula. A little bit of OB fenced in front. And then we've got the driveway which is OB to the left of it should be a pretty straightforward drive for these guys here yeah I feel like you can there's a lot of different shots you can throw just a simple hyzer with anywhere from mid range to driver on this hole and still have a look for birdie with a good second shot Were you just dumping it out to the left on this one as well? Yeah, having something pretty, just pretty straight. Finish in the open. Nothing too exciting for me on this hole. <laughs> you know, simple golf usually leads to good golf.
Yeah. This hole actually played at 4.23 during this round. There were 11 birdies on the day, but yeah, I think quite a few uh, bogeys and a couple of doubles even. Wow, that's surprising. I mean, you can get into trouble on this hole, but I feel like it should be pretty two, two pretty stock shots for a lot of these MPO players. As yeah, Luke potentially the this is how it's done there. Yeah, park job from Luke. Potentially the uh, the weather might have got to a few people. As we said before, it was the hottest day. Oh, that's nice yeah, as you can see, Blake the flag could... really not moving there. I feel like the wind on the final day kind of came in waves. Where it'd blow for a hole or two, and then it'd be pretty calm. Now, if you haven't watched round two as well, go back and watch it and see what Chris Hill does on this hole. Because that was highlight for the tournament for me. <laughs> yeah, highlight reel for sure. Got Blake here for birdie. It's a shame. It looked like he had a bit of tailwind there too. He judged that putt quite well. Just off the chastity belt. Yeah, you would have thought it would have dropped a little bit for him, but it looked like it kept its same flight. Drew here for his birdie. Smooth. And Drew's really putting it together now after those first couple pars he had to start the round. He's four down through eight now. Chris getting back on the birdie train as well after those back-to-back -back bogeys. Crowd loves it. Yeah, I would say one thing is I really loved and enjoyed the energy from the crowds all week. Yeah. Uh, whether it was just around Tournament Central or if it was throughout the event, um, you guys really brought the spirit and the energy. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice community down here in Australia. And... Uh, even though we've got some, oh, oh man, that hurts. those are heartbreakers. Yeah, Dang. even even though we've got um, we've got some uh, big um, or some 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 fine young talent coming in, um, it's still a very nice, fun community vibe, and yeah, we we have a lot awesome. of fun. Take a chase card check in here. Yeah, ah, myself actually. Hole number two drive. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, Nick. Yeah, Great drive, a, man. Thank you, sir. Just a nice, easy PD. Yeah, this is Victoria's David Perry. And look at oh. that shot. Lovely, Absolutely Dave. Parked. Uh, Dave throws mainly in of a in of a bag. It's Scott Stokely, man, with that spike and that oh. huge spike hyzer route. <laughs> I didn't see it finish, but it must be good. I mean. <laughs> Those guys it's both it. absolutely parked it. Hey, you know, sometimes you just got to take a picture. Yeah. Flex on the whole field there. Take a selfie. Beautiful drives. Drive on hole five here. Going for that skip shot again. Oh! oh what? That is... That's the robbery. Is, I hit the basket on this <laughs> and so my patty Atticus says to me, throw it about three inches higher. And I did. Oh, oh Scott. man. Scott's already writing the, the email to oh. deliver back That's to the some feedback on the basket. Oh, my God. He called it midair. <laughs> That's nuts. Uh, yeah, that one was a wild one to watch. It's hard to follow that up sometimes, you know? Today? Yeah, that's I fair mean. enough. Oh, man. 
We actually had uh, Scott come around and do a whole bunch of clinics, do quite a bit of traveling around Australia, um, sort of before and after the Aussie Champs. I think, um, yeah, a lot of the Australian community were super excited about it. So. Yeah, it's awesome what he's actually doing. He's going to be going to, I don't know how many countries, but I think he said he's going to be gone for 30 some months doing clinics around the world. Yeah, I think he's um, he's still in Australia at the moment, but I think he's heading off to uh, Europe for most of next year. Super exciting. Look at that thing, man. That overhand approach is oh, something that... else. It hurts my shoulder just thinking about it. Oh, no. Jeez. Scott Stokely, four down through nine. All right, back uh -huh. to hole nine in our featured card. Very smooth looking drive from Drew. There's a little bit of trouble if you go a bit too far left, but I think he's he's safe there. Yeah, I think this is like a it's either a rock three or, a, or maybe a Mako from Luke. Absolute park job. Lovely. Yeah, he throws that thing very well. He's been throwing it on multiple angles now, I've seen as well. So it's nice when you have a disc that you can do that with that you can trust on different shots. And Chili looks like he's inside the circle as well. Did you opt for the uh, sidearm approach here, Nick, or were you throwing a mid range? I was throwing the sidearm approach here. Um, yep. I didn't really, I didn't really like the backhand, but the more I watched this weekend, I think I should have maybe been throwing the backhand. Oh, sit and down. What is? Uh, wow. Come on, man. I don't understand how it just. How is it still rolling? Oh wow, that's just rude. <laughs> yeah. That. Wow. That, was, that rolled for 40, 50 feet. Yeah. Off the cage, like too. Cartoon roll. Uh, Drew, just a little bit left. Oh. Back to back birdies back on after. Track, yeah. Two bogeys. Lovely job. Let's tap in from Luke. Gotta love those tap in birdies. We'll take those anytime, right? 100%. Yeah, Blake just dropping off a little bit here. All right, and here's a look at our card through the front nine Drew Gibson at 400 par, Chris Hill at 400 par, Luke Bain at 400 par, and Blake Houston at even par. And let's take a look at the leaderboard. Got quite a few names up there at the top. Uh, still a few chances to uh, make me make a push for that win over Drew Gibson, but Drew's holding a steady lead. A reminder that the uh, back nine coverage will be on the PDGA's YouTube page. Patty, thanks for being here today, though. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. Keen to get you into the uh, final nine. Oh, I'm excited. It should be a battle on that back nine. Definitely come check it out. And as always, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.